Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today is episode 12 on the Hermitcraft server. It's good to see you all here, still enjoying my Let's Play episodes. Now, I am back from a holiday, as you all know, you know, you saw that, there was a big old video on it last week, but now I'm actually back, like, back at my house having done the holiday. The holiday was good. I dropped my phone in the pool, which was an issue. I mean, I didn't have a phone for the week, so that was why I wasn't replying to any comments or anything like that. And if you didn't hear about that, then... That's unfortunate, because I did rage quite a lot about it. It was my iPhone 5. I went in the pool with my swim shorts on, obviously, and I had my phone in my pocket. So, yeah, it didn't stand a chance. But who on earth puts pockets on swim shorts? It's not needed. Not needed at all. Who needs things in their swim short pockets? Anyway, that's enough of that. We have got a bunch of plans for today's episode on Hermitcraft. We're going back to the old way of doing things. We're going to be making progress in the episodes once again. I know I took a little bit of a break from doing that kind of thing. But yeah, we're going to be working on a couple of projects in today's video. But before we begin, I just want to ask a couple of questions to you. I apologize for that. First things first, I have come up with an idea I sort of want to get a P.O. box. Now, that may sound like a little bit odd, but I've seen a couple of YouTubers do it before, namely people like Generic B, and it's been very successful for them, and it's brought them a lot of happiness, and I just love the thought of you guys being able to send things that aren't expensive, or they don't cost any money. You could create things, draw things, paintings, whatever, and send them over to me, and then I could open them up on camera and be like, Ah! Thank you! Etc, uh, etc. Et I, I think that sounds like a really good idea. And if you like the sound of that, then please place down a comment section. A comment in the comment section down below. That would be absolutely great. The next thing is, as you can see, we've had a slight change of scenery over here. If you haven't seen the little prank video that I uploaded the other day, then you should watch that. But... We need some way to get back on King Happy. I mean, let's be honest, we can't just let this slide. I know he walks around thinking he's the king of the place, but we're going to show him who's boss. But I can't think of any cool way to do it. So I would like you to suggest possible pranks that we could pull on him on this server. I would love to hear what you guys have in mind. I might end up doing one of them, or I might end up becoming something really cool. I, I really don't know what I'm going to do. But that sounds like... A really good idea, so if you wouldn't mind suggesting your pranks down in the comments section below, that'll be lovely and I'll get right to it. Now as I'm sure you can all imagine, the first project for today's episode is going to be clearing up the base. We're not going to be leaving it like that in its mushroomy goodness, unfortunately. You know, it's a really nice idea. I could do something with them, but I can't think of anything at the minute. Obviously, I'm going to be keeping all of the mushrooms. I don't know what I could use them for. Perhaps potions, I don't know, really. Uh, but I was thinking that we would keep one mushroom and then give it like a golden stalk, just to say... We got pranked on the Hermitcraft server. It happened, finally. Someone had the balls to do it, and thank you for that. So, that is what's going to be happening. I guess we'll find a mushroom, we'll give it the golden stalk. But, other than that, that's not going to be the whole episode, obviously. First things first, we actually have to put the item frames on all of these chests here. Now, that is where the good thing about having all those cows comes in, because already, I've only killed a few of them, we have got enough leather to do it, which is absolutely great, because it was taking me so long to get enough leather to do all these item frames, so thank you, King Happy. It's been a bit of a blessing, but anyway, now we're going to head up to the top, and yeah, I'm going to get to work on taking out all of these mushrooms and all the cows and the nether warts. I'm going to see how long it takes. If it's taking a ridiculously long amount of time, then I might give you a progress update, if it's nice and swift, then I'll catch you in a bit. Yeah, this is taking ages. It's taking a very long time, but you know what? I am perfectly happy doing it. We have taken out all of the mushrooms. We've got a couple of cows still left to go. You can see that guy up there. A load of regular cows about as well. I don't know how that's happened. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy because for those of you who hadn't quite realised, when I started recording this episode... I didn't have the foggiest idea what I was going to talk about or what I was going to do in the episode. I didn't have any projects in mind. And that is something that has been me hitting me recently. I was away on holiday. I came back from my holiday all excited to record on Hermitcraft. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Am I that excited to record on Hermitcraft? I don't know. I've been doing the same thing for the last, you know two or three weeks now we've been working on the storage area or the gold farm or the leather or anything like that you know we've been doing that for a very long time now and it's become very grindy you know do the same thing do the same thing do this do that do the same thing over and over again for that reason 
In this episode, we are going to do something completely different. We're going to work on a couple of aesthetics based things. We are going to start off with the donator houses so we can get them dotted around. That was one of the most favourite things about my old Let's Play world. You guys and I loved those houses. Having that little village on the island, oh, it was excellent. It was a little paradise. And that's something that I really want to recreate on the Hermitcraft server. And uh, that is what we are going to be doing. So I'm going to start spreading out these pathways and getting little inroads so that we can start placing down the houses, making nice little plots for our donators, and hopefully we can get some nice homes for them as well. Everything is just so long-winded at the minute. I forgot how much wood item frames need. They need a lot of wood, and I don't have much of that anymore. So I'm now going to have to head off to King Happy's base and use his tree farm so that I can get the item frames. Jeez, if this storage room is useful, I will be happy, but if it's not, I don't know what I'm going to do. This has taken up so much of my energy, and I just want to see it done. All of the item frames are now in place. We have got our storage area almost completely done. Like, that is a really, really good feeling. This has been a decently large project, although it hasn't involved any redstone or complex things. There's a lot of stuff that had to be done to get all of these chests in place. We still need to sort out all the items. You can see we have entire areas that don't have any items in them. And we will work that out in a little bit, work out where everything goes. But I'm probably going to have to plan that one out in a creative mode world. Because you have to have everything in a chronological order. Like, for example, over here, I think I've done an okay job at getting this right. You can see we've got the stone, then the cobble, then the dirt, and then the stone brick type deals, then all the wood types, then the nether stuff. And, yeah, you can see where that all follows. However, I have noticed that there's no spot for soul sand, which means we're going to have to put something in over here. Which is annoying. And also, these things are going to move. I don't know where to, but, yeah, we've got plenty of plans for this place. Don't know what they are just yet, but I will get that all sorted out in a creative mode world. But anyway, now we are going to head up to the surface and we are going to start working on our building projects. This is going to be the first little aesthetics thing that we have done in a while, so I'm pretty excited for it. Hopefully we can create something cool. Now I might have mentioned this in the beginning, but I'm going to continue on talking anyway. My plan for this place is to create a little village so that... I can eventually put some villagers or testificates, I don't know what they're called, I, I still call them testificates, um, around the place and then it will look very homely, very nice, they can chill out, chat to their mates and do their bits. Now all the houses will be donator houses, so I believe it's £20 or more to get a donator house and I think I've got around about 6 or 7 people that deserve a donator house at the minute, so we should be able to get a couple of those done in today's episode. Now I am considering one of two options basically there are two different ways I could take this I could do individual houses for each person and they'll all be different but that will take a very very long time it will mean that I won't be able to get many houses done at all and also a couple of the houses will look worse than others I'm not very good at varying up my builds so they will end up looking very similar but just some not as nice or I could come up with a really good one design that I use throughout the village and that will give it some uniformity, it will look like a nice little place to stay, everything will look similar, and I don't know, I'm starting to favour that idea, I think that's a really cool way of doing it. So I'm going to start working on this pathway, I don't know where it's going to go off, because we need it to sort of, you know, jiggle jaggle around, go all over the place so that we can get the houses in nice and easily, and then we can dot trees about like I had in my last world, because that was really, really cool, the way that I did that was lovely, like the houses just sort of merged in with the trees, and it looked really nice, but before we get on with any of that in survival mode, I'm going to hop into a creative world to work on designing this house, so we can get a cool looking one for our village. Alright, so after a lot of fannying around and messing around with different designs and ways of building things, I went for the modern style at first, but now I thought, you know what, that's not going to fit in with our theme, and although this isn't a very jungly house, it does look like a little jungle lodge, if you get what I mean. Like, almost like a holiday resort lodge. Now, I don't want this to look like a holiday resort at all. That is what Coralis is up to, and I really like the idea of that project. But this is for a little village, and I think this is quite a nice little village house. You can see it looks fairly decent on the outside. We've got these little windows up top as well. Um, little fence post windows here as well with a torch on there. It's not meant to be there. Have a nice little ground floor balcony with a glass window. Excellent views out 
into whatever that might be. Who knows? And then if we go around the front and go inside, you can see we've got the nice plush carpet in here. And then we have, you know, the, the tabletops, the furnaces, the chests, the bed, and then the crafting bench. All of the essentials, very spacious. We have got high ceilings, so you're not going to feel oppressed. It's just, it's a nice little place. I would be happy to live there, to be quite frankly honest. So I'm going to hop back onto the Hermitcraft server and take a look at where we can build these because, you know what? Taking a look at it, it's actually a little bit larger than I was expecting. So it might be quite hard to slot this in somewhere. However, I'll try and find a spot. So I just tweeted out a picture of the house and the general consensus was that it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. That means that the Twitter people like it. You should probably like it. Hopefully if you don't, then unfortunately it's probably a little bit too late. But anyway, now we actually have to get on and start working out where these houses are going to go because if you think about it, our pathway is going to be coming along like here and then going off in that direction as well. But that means that the backs of the houses are going to be facing this. I don't know what to call this yet. But they're going to be facing that. And I don't know if that's going to look good or not. We need to start placing down some trees and things like that. That will draw the attention away from the backs of the houses. But I don't know how I feel about sort of spoiling the area around this almighty structure. I guess there's only one way to find out. I'm just going to start placing down these guys, start making the houses and seeing how it all looks. I don't know how many I'm going to get done in today's episode. Hopefully it's enough. But anyway, I'm going to get to work and I'll catch you in a bit. Alright, so the pathway is now in place. You can see that it travels off in different directions. So we'll have houses dotted around. But I've come to a new conclusion. The whole idea of having one house and one house only Although it makes sense, it will make sure that everything looks uniform and fits well with one another. Obviously it's going to set in with the same theme as the other houses because it's the same house. It does make sense. But it's a little bit boring and it's not very creative either. So we're going to have a couple of different house designs that we use. I'm only going to be placing the ones that I built in this episode in this episode so we're going to do a couple of those dotted around i think we're going to have one around about here probably one there and then maybe one in this middle part here but other than that we are going to start varying up the house designs i've got no idea what we're going to be doing for those however i'm quite excited to see what i can come up with because it has occurred to me that i'm not actually as bad a building as i thought i was i mean this wheat farm that looks all right done it this whole arena thing you guys have absolutely loved this you say it looks amazing so i'll take your word for it of course now don't worry, I'm not going to get too big for my boots, claiming that I'm, you know, some form of building god. I'm really not. I'm just saying that it's coming a lot easier than it used to, which is really good. And that means that I have scope to be creative and get to work on different types of builds that I wouldn't usually do. But anyway, now that we have all this space cleared out, I'm going to head off, collect up the resources we need for this build and get to work. So I'm just over at King Happy Space and I thought this was worth showing you. You guys saw my world tour last week, didn't you? None of this was here. He really is just a workhorse. He goes for it. And, you know, when he does it, he does it well. And this is what he is up to. I hope he doesn't mind me showing this. It's King Happy's place. He appears to be turning the swamp into a mushroom biome. Which I really like the idea of. Swamps are pretty ugly. And although mushroom biomes aren't much better, this is going to look really, really cool once it's done. I don't know what he's heading for with this. I don't know if it's going to be like a giant tree or just a giant post. But I think this looks really, really good. And I'm very excited to see what he comes up with because King Happy is one of those guys that just goes big. And <laughs> by the look of things, he's already starting to do that. But anyway, I'm going to get on and harvest my trees. That's what I came here for. So hopefully we can gather up some wood to do our houses. After a lot of resource gathering, we finally got ourselves enough items to get on with these houses. Can't believe how long that took. I sort of went over to my storage area Happy as Larry thinking, yeah, gonna get on and build this, then realised I don't actually have anything. So I've had to go to various farms around the place, mine out a load of stone, because I believe I've left all my stuff over at where the gold farm is, and I just can't be bothered to go and get it, to be quite frankly honest. So, yeah, we've got all of this, now let's crack on and start work on this house. Progress update number one, as you can see I've really gone to town on this one, and it is looking very, very nice. In the surroundings, like when it's slightly covered by leaves and trees and the grass around it, it's a lot less harsh on it. So now that we've got like this kind of area, it looks extremely, extremely cool. 
I am very happy with how this is turning out. Currently we have got one side of it done. We still need to do the other half. You can see that's just like an open chasm. But yeah, as far as the resources go, it's not too bad. Need a hell of a lot, hell of, a lot of these wooden um, stairs, these spruce wood stairs. I think I've used around about almost the stack already. And we only have four stacks of them. So that means that we have enough to do two of these houses, most probably, if everything goes to plan. But anyway, I guess I need to get some glass and things like that. But at the minute, I'm very happy with this. I'm going to continue working on it. And hopefully, the next time I do a progress update, we will have ourselves a finished product. That would be nice, wouldn't it? There it is, ladies and gentlemen. House number one is almost complete. Like, we are so close to being there. We don't have any of the glass to put in the windows, and at the minute it doesn't have any furniture in it, so it's a little bit empty. But other than that, the structure is entirely in place, and it is looking as good as ever. You know, we've got the, the little windows there. It's just feeling very homely. Ah... Uh, very idyllic, isn't it? The nice jungle views. I mean, you should see the views out the back of this thing as I deal with this guy. There's a slight zombie infestation problem. That's not an issue, though. I'm sure, you know, the tenants will be absolutely fine. But if we just take a look out the back, there it is. Uh, it's like a postcard picture, that. Bar him. Basically a postcard. Would you look at that? We've got ourselves a second house. Yeah, I was going to do the standard progress updates for this one, but then it occurred to me that you'd seen all of that for this first one, so I just got on with it and built it. And you can see it looks pretty good next to each other. They're very nice indeed. At the minute, they are standing a little bit tall, and by that I mean they don't have anything surrounding them. What I really want to see is them merge into the environment. Like, you wouldn't notice they were there unless you were looking for them. I don't know, it's a really hard thing to explain, but I want it to look like they're at one with the environment around them, and that's something that I'm going to have to work on, you know, planting trees around it. Um, I've got the long grass here, but yeah, we could have some bushes and leaves going in between, get some vines around the place, but at the minute, this is looking very cool. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do another house of this style, because as I discussed earlier, we're not going to be going with the one house theme anymore. Uh, we're going to be varying up the designs, and I don't know if three of the same house is a little bit too much. Um, I might have to take a minute to think about that, but yeah, this is looking good. But hey, this wouldn't be a donator house if we didn't actually have a sign on it for the donator. Now, hopefully, I am going to say this name correctly. I think it is Tunis NL. I'm going to write it down on the sign and you can tell me if I'm right or not. T E U N I S N L. And then he donated £75, which is a huge amount of money. So, massive thank you to you. I hope that the house is worth it. And yeah, you put an absolutely huge smile on my face. So, that was really lovely. Now this is going to sound quite odd, but I believe I have lost the pound sign. Every time I press the pound sign, it just comes up with a hash. So let's try this again. Our next donator goes to a fairly big one. His name is Toby T and he donated, damn it, Toby T and he donated 50 pounds. There it is. We've even got the pound sign in there. So thank you, Toby. That is really lovely. I hope that you like your house. You're welcome to come in here and stay whenever, sort of, and yeah, thanks for that. So for this last part of the episode, we are going to be taking a break on building and getting the village done. You can see that I have done a little bit extra. We've added a few trees in just to make it look a little bit more homely, and uh, I, I don't really know what I'm talking about there. But now we are actually going to head off, and we are going to do a ton of book enchantments. You can see I've got three stacks of leather here, so that means we've got enough to do absolutely loads of books. We just have to head into spawn to pick up some sugarcane, and then we should be away. So I'm going to do all of that and then I'll meet you over at the ender ender. We are now over at the ender ender. I have got myself two full stacks of books. I've done two enchantments and so far we've got power three and efficiency fee three which actually that's really not that bad. I can't complain and like I said we've got 128 chances to get this right so hopefully we get at least one good enchantment. Now obviously I am going to be combining these books so that we can get even better enchantments. So for example if I get another efficiency fee then I can combine those to get efficiency 4 then combine it with an unbreak in then a silk touch etc etc until we get ourselves some godly books that we can put on any of the tools that we need to. But anyway I'm going to get to work. Going to do a ton of enchanting here 
here, and hopefully we can get ourselves some decent stuff. I honestly forgot how fun enchanting is, especially with these new books. Well, they're not really new, they've been around for absolutely ages, but the ability in to enchant books is fairly recent, and I hadn't really done it before, but it takes out the risk of enchanting, which means that it's very stress-free. Generally speaking, if you put in like your brand new diamond pickaxes into the enchanting table, you're like, please don't be rubbish, please don't be rubbish. But considering this only takes one minute to get to level 30, and I've got 128 books, I'm really not that worried, but you can see here, we have just got a couple of the books that I have done. We've got Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3, Sharpness 4, Looting 3, Power IV. I'm going to add something else to that one. And then we have this one, which is also going to get knocked back on it as well. Then in here are all the books that are pretty rubbish. These are the ones that I've combined together to create all right things that will then go on to other things. But I've done a handful of books, I think around about 30 now. And it's all going well, so we have broken the anvil. And we're going to have to head back to my base to pick up some iron to make another. But I am loving this. Okay, sometime later now, we have done a bunch of enchanting. It has been a while, but I'm still really enjoying it. I've got no clue why. It's like when they introduced enchanting into Minecraft, something just switched on and I started really enjoying it. And... From then on in, I've just loved doing it, and for that reason, we have got tons of enchanted books. These are all the rubbish ones, so yeah, the ones that I'm probably never going to use, but I will keep. Then these are the alright ones, the ones that I could have a use for in the near future, or I could combine them with something else to get something better. But this all-important chest here, this is where all the good ones go. So I did make the mistake of combining some of the books, which is a bit of a shame, but you can see that, yeah, we've got some really awesome stuff. That I went a bit over the top on, but oh well. So we've got Feather Falling, Sharpness, Protection, lots of protection there. Um, more Feather Falling, the good old Working Pick or whatever tool. Then we have some Infinity, Feather Falling, Sharpness, Looting... I'm breaking three, that's really useful. Efficiency three, fortune two, which is great. More feather falling, respiration, acro affinity, more protection, couple of efficiency fours, and then a fortune three and a silk touch one. Out of all 80 books that I enchanted, I only got one of each of those. So they're not very likely, but you know, we've got them now, so that means that we can put them on any tool. But unfortunately, that is all I've got time for for today, so I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button, and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.